this class, an introduction to class eight, where we introduce um, for the four bar linkage, the vector loop position analysis. And we have to define what a vector loop is. It's gonna be uh, really useful to us in uh, doing analysis of mechanisms. All right, so um, what, we can, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna call this the an anal analytical analysis, right? As opposed to the graphical analysis. Um, and some of for uh, basic mechanisms, these have been solved, uh, and you could have like a, uh, a nice um, put together equation, standalone equation, that you could just plug and chug for things. Um, so from uh, Mishka here, um, the analytical solutions here for a closed form position analysis for an inline slider crank um, is this right here, right? So um, this is just based on geometry and has been solved, right? So uh, we can find out what this angle is gonna be, this, uh, th for a given theta two, we could think of that, and, and I would call this a crank slider because we say that it's cranking and it's causing sliding, so we could say it's crank first. Um, theta two would be the input, right? So we would have a known input, we would know what the lengths are right here. And so what we could find, we could find this uh, missing right here. So this is, if you look at this, this is just law of signs uh, to be able to find what that uh, unknown angle is. Um, and then you can also just find what the, uh, the other angle, this uh, gamma that they're showing here. And then this length is often what we wanna find. And that's just law of cosines if you just look at this right here, okay. Um, and then if you have an, an offset uh, um, uh, crank slider right here, uh, you can find it's just a little bit more work, right? It's not too much terrible. Um, and they went ahead and they could figure out what that L4 is going to be. And um, yeah, just uh, just extra, a little, little extra geometry uh, coming on here. Um, and uh, uh, here you go. So now here's a lo much longer one for the closed form solution uh, for a position analysis here uh, for a, a four bar, okay? And um, so this, and I'm just presenting these because uh, uh, yeah, they're useful to us uh, to try to find um, this, but the, the, the problems can become much more complicated uh, we're trying to do it yourself than to just plug and chug in as part of this. Um, by the way, they're using as an in-between step here, this diagonal BD right here. So uh, we want to find that distance in the, di the diagonal of the BD. And then once we do that, we're able to figure out uh, this angle right here, this uh, uh, gamma. And then um, from those, we're able to find theta three and theta four. Now, remembering that theta two is a uh, an input right here, and that we might have some instances uh, where we would have to look and see it slightly differently, uh, because if you're like in the um, crossed condition, and they're calling it a different circuit right here. So um, that's like that's the, that, that's this, this these right here. We could just plug numbers into them, and you're like, well, why would we even care? You know, now now that's great. Um, but if we want to do something, um, do a little bit more step by step, it'd be a little bit more engineering and less uh, technician, right? Where the technician is just going to plug and chuck numbers into the thing. We want to try to be very systematic and have something more like a more universal type of approach uh, to be able to do the uh, position analysis um, using uh, an, an analytical analysis, which just sounds redundant. Um, so we're going to use this vector loop idea here. So um, here's some vector uh, vector graphical uh, addition of vectors, right? So if you have two vectors, right? So we have R A and then R B with respect to A, right here. We can find R B, right? So what we're doing right now is we're finding we, we well, let's say we have a known vector R A, and then we know what the relationship between two vectors are. That's R B with respect to A. That's just going to be we're going to make this vector triangle. And remember, we go. Uh, uh, nose to tail, right, is the ones that we add, and then we go tail, tail, nose, nose, right? And that's gonna be the uh, graph, the vector representation of this equation right here. So if we wanna know RB, and we know RA, and we know how B is, is related to A, B with respect to A, we can write that. 
And we could do this um, by way of the angles that are between inside these, right? Or the angles that we know we can construct these vectors, or we could break them into components and, and then add them together, like, like so, right there. Now uh, we can all, so here, here's where I'm breaking them about, and uh, I made this animation, so I figured I, uh, I would use it. Um, where we can see that we have, like if we know this theta A of vector R A, and we know this, uh, uh, you know, th th these are usually, we're usually measuring uh, the angles from the, uh, the positive horizontal axis right there. So we, we know these two things. We can use the law of sines uh, and co the law of sines and colon cosines to be able to break this thing apart and uh, figure out what these interior angles are, are going to be, right? Uh, uh, these smaller angles uh, by, by, by these known, these given ones, we can have uh, f find out what these things are going to be. And we can take the law of cosines right here. Once we know this magnitude and this magnitude and then the angle that's in between them, we can use the law of cosines and uh, find out what this missing, this unknown RB is going to be. So, um, you know, that, that's always a choice that we have. We could use the components much easier. Um, but we also might want to take these triangles and uh, break them apart and then find uh, uh, the, the missing uh, angles. And we, and we can find the last angle uh, that we have here by the law of sines. Um, so we could find that the, 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 uh, the theta b is what I would be calling it uh, um, as part of this. Okay. So now the vector loop idea right here is instead of having this addition like right here, instead we're going to um, do a, um, we're, we're going to march through uh, um, this, uh, this process, march through uh, here. And I think I have this backwards right here unfortunately uh, and I have a class that's starting in 10 minutes so I might wrap up this video pretty quickly here um, as I'm drawing this out right here yeah okay so this is actually supposed to be plus right there yeah that should be plus um, because the, the signs as we're seeing right there if you're going in the direction of the arrow right here. I guess it is a minus. Okay, I'll get back. That is minus because we're showing that this is actually going to be minus RB right there. So uh, when we reverse the direction uh, of this thing, um, see, I, th I think it's going to be better if I go like this right here. If I go like that and move this guy back over to there. Okay. Yeah, that's a better explanation right there. Yeah, I like that one better. So when we do a vector loop, what we're doing is we're, we're marching through here. We're traveling through the loop. And if we're going in the same, and let's go counterclockwise. If we're going in the same direction as the arrow, it's positive. But as soon as we start to go through the vector loop and we go in the opposite direction of the arrow, or negative but you see that now we've closed the thing down we've essentially said the same thing that's over on the left but here we're saying it on the right and we're making this vector loop statement um, so um, and then you could break the loop into uh, uh, components right so uh, what you see right here is that the uh, uh, you, you, and I actually kind of would want to write this differently. I think I would want to write this differently. I want to write the same way as I have up above right here that I was going to say maybe I would say it this way right here. I'd say minus there equal to zero because that's typically what I'm going to do. I like that one better. But this is going to be too big, isn't it? Uh, why am I writing those things out? I don't know. But anyway, let me let me write these out. This is closer to what we do more often. There you go. Oh, not it needs to be still inside there. Equal zero. And there's nothing really new here, okay. And let me put this over here so we get over to the side. 
and get him right there. Okay, so, oh, and also that didn't look pretty either. Okay, so there's the idea of the vector loop, right? That we, we're marching through this loop and we're gonna break it down into components. We're gonna break this equation into components, each of these, so uh, that we can have um, a standalone x uh, equation and a standalone uh, y equation right here. So a vector a loop applied to uh, mechanisms will uh, look uh, very similar right here, okay? Um, what we'll do Hopefully, here is this. This is like the abbreviated version, isn't it? The abbreviated version, and then we have the long version. That's page nine. Oh, there's so many pages in this. This is such a long class. What did I decide to do here? Um, class eight, class eight. Where is page one? This is page one. Where'd you go? Hmm. I have to go off to class here. All right, class in five minutes. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many pages do you have? Page 16? Are you kidding me? There you go, page 3. Couldn't find it. Oh, that's why that's class nine right there. I didn't know where to make, break these things off when I was making them. That's why it ended up being so long. There you go. There it is right there. Here's the here's where the abbreviated one was, and here is where the actual notes are. So unfortunately, I can't. Um, Crop these things out here. All right, so here's our vector loop um, stuff, and I probably wanted to change uh, the way that I wrote this thing out right here. Um, boy, I wish I could have changed that right there and make that like that right there, like that, and then that does represent this a little bit better, I think. And then I wanted to move that over to here. It's just a small change I wanted to make. So anyway, um, for the vector loop applied to this, and then I will have to end the video so I go to class. Um, so applied to this simple locate, we'll say that this is going to be length A, this is length B, and they like to make this length D. What happened to C? Uh, they like to reserve that for the offset one. So we're going to say that this is going to be a vector R2 right here and you can see here's the there is the um, arrowhead and then um, here this is vector R3 and here is the arrowhead over here and then here is going to be what I'm going to call it um, R1 and if we do our uh, I guess in this case we decided to go clockwise so we'll say that R2 plus R3, we're going backwards here, minus R1 is equal to zero. So if we're going to walk through here and we're going to use um, as our means of uh, describing angles right here, we're always going to go um, from the root of this right here. Um, so we're going to say uh, that um, in the x direction, writing this thing out here, we have a times the cosine of theta 2 right here, plus b times the cosine of theta 3, and then this thing in the x direction is just minus d right there. So we just substituted d for there. And then for this one, uh, we'll say in the y direction, a times the sine of theta 2 plus b times the sine of theta 3 equals 0. And so if 
theta 2 is given, we can find theta 3 and d. And this right here is really what we represented in this right up in here. That we could find this theta 3 from, uh, from this uh, right here, right? There's just this ratio, and we could find what the theta 3 was going to be. And the same thing uh, for this d. We could um, stick this in here, and um, with a little bit of effort right in there, we could find, we were going to end up, we could substitute and find uh, this right here. So I have to run off to class, um, but this is a, uh, a video uh, for the introduction of, of the vector loop.